Good morning, Daily Huddleites. We're so happy you're here this morning. You know, I've been thinking a lot about mermaids lately. I mean, people are throwing shade on mermaids. Mermaids are human too. I mean, for example, Catherine, do you know why the mermaid wears seashells? No, I don't. She outgrew her bee shells. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you got to love it. Good morning. Good morning. What a little intimate crowd we have here this morning. We don't have our founders, but we are going with females and mermaid jokes this morning. I'm feeling it. <laughs> I have a qu few questions for you all this morning to get us warmed up. So Andrea, I'm always so happy to see you. Tell me, tell me this morning, how are you and what are you grateful for? So Tara, good morning. I am the way I say I am. And today I am free and full of opportunities. Oh, I feel right. that. Right. Mm -hmm. And you said grateful for the yes. same things, freedom and opportunities. Uh, I feel that so much. I've been writing a lot about freedom and what freedom means to different people. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I just, that just charged me up. Good morning, Stan. Good morning. Tell me, tell me, where are you and who will you hug today? Well, let me see. Um, I'm here. I'm right here where I'm supposed to be now. And I'm gonna hug my beautiful wife today. You know, I, I just like hugging her and I, and I kind of owe her a good, strong hug. Yeah, mm. nice one. I love that. I, I, I hate the old fake COVID hugs, but we're back to real hugs, aren't we? <laughs> I love hearing that. I am gonna ask my beautiful co-host, Catherine Sable to tell us <laughs> of all mornings, what time <laughs> is it? <laughs> I am so delighted to tell you that the time is now, that there's no other time and no other place except for right here and right now. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We are so glad to be here this morning. It's Wednesday on the Daily Huddle where we talk everything communication and relationships because we know that more effective communication builds better relationships and better, more authentic relationships builds better families, better communities and better business. So let's talk communication with our beautiful guest, Catherine. Well, thank you, Tara. Yeah, this is a fun one for me. Um, we have Laura West today to talk about how to attract your soul tribe. And before we dive in, I wanna introduce Laura to the group. Um, so in addition to being a dear friend of mine, Laura is the founder and president of the Center for Joyful Business, and she also is the host of Joyful Business TV. She's an international business success coach who helps purpose-driven entrepreneurs discover their creative leadership so they can share their soul work with more people. She is passionate that you can do meaningful work while making great money, which I, I love that about her. You can be creative and make money doing it. And she's also the author of hundreds of programs, which have really cool names like the Fun and Fabulous Follow-Up and the Joyful Business Plan. So welcome today, Laura. I'm so excited to have you. Thank you. Welcome. I'm so excited to be back with you guys and gals. <laughs> yes. Yeah, this is actually And I love the mermaid joke. I love mermaids. <laughs> I know for those of you missed it, you'll have to listen back. Laura, I think this is your third time with us on the Daily Huddle. Is that right? I think so. Yes. Okay. I just can't get enough. That's that's right. That's what we like. Um, well, good. Well, great. We're going to dive in because we want to talk about how to attract a soul tribe. But first, I want to know what your definition of a soul tribe is. I can imagine what you think it is, but I want to hear from you. How do you define it? Yeah, that's where I was going to start. It's so perfect. I'm actually, where I really want to start is backing up just a little bit to give you context for this. Um, you know, what I feel I'm really passionate about, I feel like as entrepreneurs, we are, um, it's like in the air, you know, where we have to move fast. It's all this pressure to go fast, to go 
big to go, you know, grow your list, make money, get more people, get new people. And, um, and I kind of go contrary, not that we don't want to create our visions, but that actually the key to do that is to slow down in order to go fast, Mm. slow down to go fast. And so that's actually where the idea of the soul tribe was really birthed was slowing down and recognizing like who's here around me already. And so the soul tribe, your soul tribe is made up of um, six different types of people. So, you know, we always have market, you know, we have a market, we have our niche and things like that. And you still have your message, you still have your niche, but your soul tribe is really slowing down to take a look at like who's here. And so it's made up of, of course, your current clients, people you're working with right now, your past clients, future clients, those that makes up half of your soul tribe, (coughs) excuse me. But the other half of your soul tribe is made up of like your colleagues, you know, colleagues who they're following what you do. They know what you do. They're supporting you. They're supporting your message. It's also made up of your raving fans. So people who just love you, like they are those connectors, right? People who maybe they're not even sure why they love you, you know, but they're there and they promote you anytime they can. And then you have this other sliver in your um, soul tribe are people who are fascinated and curious. And those are people who are kind of hanging around the periphery. Maybe they'll become clients, maybe not, but they're, they're just new to you. And they're like, something's there that's really interesting. And so I love the idea of looking at your soul tribe um, and seeing who's there right here, right now. And how can you nurture those relationships to start with? Wow, that's great. I, I love how you're just like sort of defining the different places, but I really love the slow down look around, like I'm actually looking on the screen and I'm thinking, wow, these are my soul tribe. Like these are the people. And to really notice, I don't know, there's something really cool about that. There's some ease and flow in it. Yes. But there's not a lot to do just to slow down and look around. Because I think you're right. We are always moving and moving and moving to the next thing, bigger and better. Yeah. And here's the thing, you know, that it's like, we know this, but to really get um, intentional, conscious about the fact that, you know, the universe brings us these opportunities, right? We talk about a lot about the universe. We want them to bring us clients, bring, you know, I want to speak more. I want to um, have more visibility, but the universe works through other people, right? It brings opportunities through other people. So when you look around and you see and really acknowledge people in your soul tribe, that's where the opportunities are going to come from, right? The people in your soul tribe. So it could be anything from these people around you are just dream believers, which is so important to have rather than the dream downers, right? We want people who are dream believers. To me, that's priceless to have people who also believe in the same dream that we have, the same vision we have. Um, But there's also people, you know, every one of us has connections to other people, other potential clients, referral partners, introductions that we can make, um, other podcasts, other summits, all sorts of opportunities that um, where we can expand and grow our business are all right here. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take us down a little path because something is just totally coming up in my mind. So Laura and I just spent the weekend together in Virginia Beach. And we did a little mini um, retreat together. So it was awesome. And something that came up, we would pull cards in the morning and we would do some work together. And something that came up was this idea of luck. Mm. (laughs) And what you're describing, Laura, is um, I want to talk a little bit about, because you had a real definition around luck Mm -hmm. and you're, you're speaking to it right now. Can you say more a little bit about that, about the paying attention? Yeah, absolutely. The, um, I loved our conversation about luck and, you know, I always try to come from this abundance mindset. And so I look at things through that lens and, um, so luck, you know, luck, when you just kind of talk about it, like in normal everyday life kind of sounds like this thing that's very arbitrary and it's like, well, I was just lucky today. And, you know, or somehow I was lucky you weren't, you know, that it just is very random or there's somebody down there and it's like, oh, Laura, you're going to be lucky today, you know, just randomly picked. And I remember reading about this study that um, I was actually looking for it again over the weekend. And they did a study about people who consider themselves lucky and people who consider themselves not lucky. And they had them go in a room and read a newspaper 
and what they and they were looking for certain things and they had to go through every page of the newspaper the people who considered themselves lucky actually were really curious and they would read the ads in the newspaper they would read other parts of the newspaper and then there was this ad in the newspaper that said hey you're lucky you get to stop and fold up your newspaper and you're done and so what they really uh what they were proving is that people who are lucky are actually people who are open and curious like they're curious about who's around them, right? What's around them? Uh, what opportunities are right there surrounding them? And they happen to see that. And um, I mean, I know my son, my younger son, he's always finding money, like $20 bills. And I think it's because he's curious and he's always kind of looking around and he's the one who's going to spot the $20 bill laying on the ground, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's why, you, you know, you may think, well, luck, how does that relate to Soul Tribe? But as you're describing it, that's what keeps coming up is actually it's paying attention to the people around you and getting curious because then you're able to see the opportunities. Just like you said, that networking, oh, they just said such and such. I wonder if that could be a connection. Yes, yes. I actually call it, um, it's a principle I teach my clients about deep listening, right? Deep listening to your soul tribe. So whether you're you know, having an interaction like this, right? And I'm over here thinking, wow, I could write an article about luck. Like, I think I just got my next article. You know? There's opportunities and clues everywhere when you're open and curious. When you are um, coaching all your clients, if you're a coach or you're working with your clients, when you practice deep listening, like they're giving you information about your next video content, your next article content, what your next program is. Um, I remember probably 10, 12 years ago, I had four client retreat days in a row. And every one of them were like, Laura, how do I do a, a sales page? You know, what am I, what's the critical information I need and how do I make it easy and fun? Well, after doing that four different times, I created a product, you know, back then that was how to create easy and simple sales pages that are fun and successful. Because so, the information's right there. Right, and that, that's what I love about that is how easy it is. Because you really help people align their energy and like, that's super easy just to get quiet. I don't have to go out and do a bunch of stuff. It's listening to the people around me. Yes. What are they asking for? What are the similarities? Yeah. So I always, um, I know we were talking a lot about energy alignment. I feel like that's my, one of my superpowers is helping entrepreneurs figure out you know, how to align their energy with their, what their beautiful brilliance and gifts are, um, what their authentic marketing style is in a way that feels really good. And so we look for where's it flowing and where's the friction. Mm -hmm. And that friction, sometimes you see that with your clients and those, the friction and the flow are great opportunities. Like we're talking about great opportunities to find your next product, your next program, your next article. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you've, you, you've identified different areas of Soul Tribe, like who are the people around me? what do I do now? Like, how do I connect them? How do I speak to them? What's the, what's the next step? Yeah. So, um, part of it is when you practice that deep listening is that you're really looking for, it's those clues, right? Those different clues around, you know, what are the things they have in common? What are their common dreams? Um, I know, like I noticed that my clients all, a lot of, there are a lot of coaches, a lot of healers, uh, change leaders of all types and they all, want to write a book, they want to lead retreats, and they want to create a card deck, <laughs> you know, an Oracle card deck. Those are three things they have in common. And of course, they want to make more money and they want to find their voice. And so when I start seeing those similarities through that deep listening and conversation and being open and curious, those are clues to be able, what I can talk to people about. And so again, um, that next step is to start creating content and become more visible with that content that really speaks to your soul tribe. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I would say the next step after that is to to nurture your current soul tribe. So to intentionally nurture, I think I want to say that I spoke on a daily huddle about fun and fabulous follow up. I think that was one of my topics. And um, to me, I create a game out of reaching out and following up. And with my clients, they'll do it for like 30 days. They'll reach out, make a game out of reaching out to three people a day for 30 days to just nurture relationships, um, create connections, invite people to talk, even just 
ask somebody or tell somebody to have a good day, you know, like have a great week and check in on how that, how did that daily huddle interview go? You know, that kind of thing. So that you start nurturing the relationship that you have, that you have all around you right here, right now. So I've done the fun, fabulous follow-up, the 30 days. And, I, you know, at first I was like, well, this is great. It gets me in communication and contact with people. But what came from that was magical. Like I got clients out of it. That wasn't the intention. It was more, like you said, just to sort of nurture and see where it was going. But there's something about being intentional and it's three people a day and it's not even about work stuff necessarily. It's just, you know, like you said, how did that, how did that interview go? So it what's the magic? Anything. It can be anything because yeah. at the, um, the way that my, the way I look at things, like at the very, the very foundation of everything is your personal energy system right? So your personal energy system, how are you feeling, you know, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, you know, I have seven different uh, um, energy centers. So when you reach out, so even if you reach out to somebody, and like I reached out to one of my girlfriends this morning to send her a text, I reached out to my sister this morning and sent her a text, you know, good morning, how's life kind of thing. And it just puts you, it makes you feel connected to the world, right? You're putting out positive vibes, Right, and we usually get positive vibes back, or we find a way that we can help somebody, uh, which is really nice. But to me, when you shift that energy, when you shift your energy, like that is priceless. Like that is priceless, and that's actually ultimately that's why it leads back to my origin story around why I called my company the Center for Joyful Business. Is that when you're in your joy, when you're in your optimism, when you're in that positive place, like real, true, authentic positivity. Um, you have more energy, you know, you have more confidence. You are more likely to pick up the phone and call somebody, you know, or send that email. So after you get your energy going with your sister or my, you know, my dad, we text every morning, you know, I get my energy going with that. Then it's like, all right, well, who else can I reach out to? And then you reach out to a client and then you reach out to that potential client or like you and I reached out this morning and just had some good vibe. You sent me, um, a card that you pulled this morning and that just made my morning like it made me have such great energy and then that gets you know creates a ripple effect in our our energy and studies have proven that when you feel good you do good that's how what i call it they don't mm. say that in the studies but uh, barbara Fredrickson talks about um she wrote a whole book called positivity and she did studies at work that when you are feeling positive when you're feeling happy and joyful that you're more confident um, so that means to me and entrepreneur words, right? We're more likely to respond to that potential client. We're more likely to say yes to that speaking opportunity. Um, we're more likely to put out our voice, our content. Um, you're also more creative, more innovative. So we're more willing to take risk. We're more um, open to come up with creative solutions. Like there's a whole bunch packed in there. It seems like, oh, just send out some texts and you know, what a great way to start the day. And that is true, but it's loaded with so much more um, power impact than you realize. Yeah, I, it's funny. I was just about to ask you, well, what's the magic behind it? And then you just totally launched in and described it uh -huh. and getting our own energy aligned. Um, this is so juicy. I wanna open it up for questions, but I wanna bring Tara in first and see if she has a question for us. I do. Thank you so much for sharing this. I relate to the power of positive energy. I've studied it a lot as well and really analyzed it um, throughout my life. And I wonder if you could help us with something, though. Um, there's so much truth to what you're saying. I mean, physiologically, that we can change the way we see the world by our actions and our brain and reaching out to other people. But I also... I, I know I've been here in my life what I'm about to share and I have friends who just sort of stuff away their pain and they don't deal with it and they say oh you know I should feel I it could be so much worse I should be happy it's okay it's okay it doesn't matter and I just see people stuffing away pain and I don't think that's the point of that so talk to me a little bit about balancing that yeah yeah absolutely um yeah, that's not about slapping a happy face, you know, on top of whatever you're feeling and coming out with the, oh yeah, fine, everything's fine, it's all good, and uh, it's all good, it's all good, <laughs> you know, um, that's a real clue, like, yeah, I don't think so, <laughs> you know, so it's about being authentic and being real and being able to, um, to me, when we have real conversations about, you know, today was a hard morning, and actually when Catherine sent me the cards, I was like, 
you know, that's just what I needed. I'm excited about being on the show, but I was having a little bit of some stuff going on about some things we were talking about over the weekend. You know, when you start expanding into a bigger vision, your gremlins are going to come up and start grabbing you by the ankles. And so we don't, this is not about positivity. Um, right now, there's a big term out there called toxic positivity. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what everybody's talking about. And so I get a little bit, um, uh, you know, on my soapbox about it, because there's a way that it becomes this toxic positivity, like you're not allowed to be positive and that we all want to be real. And so let's talk about the deep, dark stuff. And so, yes, we do. We want to talk to me. It's about the bigger goal is to have the access, the full range of emotions, you know, everything from the, um, harder, more constricting emotions. There's value there. It tells you a lot. There's constricting emotions around, um, you know, even despair or, you know, feeling more on you know, what we might call depressed, feeling overwhelmed to some of those transitional emotions, like where we're bored or um, we might be angry, um, we might have doubt, we might have worry. Like to be able to identify those emotions in that range will actually allow you to expand to the upper range of enthusiasm, passion, love, joy, you know, um, self-authority, things like that. So I work a lot with clients on expanding their emotional range because when you expand your range, even in what we might call negative, you know, emotions, I don't really believe there's negative emotions. It's just um, more constricting emotions that we keep bottled up, but it actually allows you to expand on the joy side of things. And so often part of my path I'll say is that I felt like growing up, there was sort of this range that was acceptable. You know, I can <laughs> stay in the middle range, but if you were sad or depressed or bummed out or anything, you know, that wasn't allowed. And if you were too excited, too joyful, too passionate, that wasn't allowed. Somebody was gonna come and crush that. And so I sort of learned to live in this middle range. And what I find is that people need, um, they need permission and um, practice and going, expanding both ranges. So expanding, yeah, if you're really upset about something, you're really worried about something, they need that. And they also need permission to be in their joy. Because as much as we talk about, pos um, or talking about toxic positivity, people will just gloss over it with sort of this fake positivity instead of right. really being joyful and really saying, you know what, I am really excited about what happened today and I wanna be able to share that with somebody. Right. Obviously, I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, thank you so much for all that Thanks. color around this topic. Yeah, yeah, and I love the idea of range. And we're going to open it up to questions. I see Mike already has one. Mike, yes. Yeah, so I love this conversation. And I've, I've missed uh, the daily huddle for about three weeks now. Uh, oh, so God. I'm glad I came in for this one. So I'm one of those, I'm a sales guy. So I'm very positive all the time. You know, I guess all sales guys, are, but I am, I'm always positive. And I think I kind of generate that. And I think sometimes it may come off as being inauthentic because I always look for the sunny side, right? So somebody says, you know, it's really a yucky day. You know, it takes rain to appreciate the sunshine. You know, I mean, that's who I am, but that's how I internalize things so I can exist in a world. And what I've learned is I have to sort of temper that, right? because people will say, yeah, yeah right, Mike. It, Mike's always sunny, right? Well, Mike really isn't, but if I think about the clouds, then that will be depressing. And who the heck wants to be depressed, right? Uh, yeah. but, 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 it, but it is a delicate dance. And, and in order to be authentic, one has to be sensitive to how one is perceived and how one may even fake their own happiness, right? So anyway, thank you for this. It's a great conversation. And that's I really great. I, I think that I love that, Mike, what you're bringing up. Like there's, for me, I feel like I'm like that too. It's almost like I've trained myself, not almost, it, I've trained myself to be more positive. And people are like, oh, of course your business is called Joyful Business because you're so joyful. And it's like, yeah, no, that's not been my life story, you know? Um, and so um, I have trained myself to look for the opportunities and the silver lining and things like that. But I think what you're speaking to, Mike, is really about presence, right? People want you to be present. And it's like, sometimes we can have these, you know, um, quick things that we say, and it's really not about the positivity piece or, you know, getting them to look at something positive. It's really about being authentic, as you said, Mike, being present, 
people just want to be seen and heard. So even if they're having a rough day, they just want you to acknowledge that. And once you acknowledge that, then you can start taking them to the place of, well, let's look at the silver lining here. Yeah, I can see where that's really hard. Nice. So I think we need that piece around presence and authenticity in order for it to be really, truly real. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Tom. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Laura, good morning. Good to see you again. Uh, Tara's question was touching on this, and, and I just want to go a little further. Like you're, you're touching on, uh, you're, you're covering being, you know, authentic. I'm just curious, like, tell us more about your own personal routines that you do to further develop, you know, the ability to be present and then to find the joy and then to be, to be curious. Because I, obviously, you know, some mornings you wake up and right. you're just not there. And, yeah. but, but through some uh, deliberate habits, you, know, you can help get yourself there. Yeah, absolutely. I love habits and rituals and things to support us, just like brushing your teeth, supporting you and having, you know, great healthy teeth, right? And a great smile. Um, I, do, I have all sorts of things in my toolkit. And so there's plenty of times where I wake up on the wrong side of the bed or I wake up at three in the morning and I'm like, Oh my God, what was that huge vision that Catherine and I came up with and, you know, for my business and the gremlins are like, yeah, three in the morning, this is our favorite time to come in and wreak havoc. And, um, there's all sorts of things that I do. So I'll do things. I do a lot of journaling, you know, to be able to, you know, going back to, um, being able to process some of those emotions. So lots of times in the morning, I will just do that. I'll do morning pages and that brain dump for, um, what needs to come out like and sometimes it's worries and it's concerns and and things like that and you, i need to get it out of my head and out of my body i think tara was talking about you know it's like we get all these chemicals going when we start going down the path of um, worry and doubt and anxiety that starts releasing all these chemicals in our bodies so to me i look for ways to start releasing some of that and so sometimes it's things like journaling sometimes it's things like moving my body you know dancing I'll put on music in the morning and really try to just start, you know, I'm doing the smoothie dance, you know, <laughs> like yeah, I do that at work. I work in a bank and do that a lot. I get a lot of curious looks, but yeah. I love that. Oh, I love that. I love imagining that you're doing the dance at the bank. That's perfect. <laughs> but, you know, really finding your repertoire, you know, your buffet of joy shifting. That's what I call it. Your buffet of, th of tools that'll help you shift your joy, you know, shift into joy, shift and release. Because I think that's where the toxic positivity, if you just try to slap it over, but you need to have the releases. Um, sometimes I will take a Sharpie marker and a blank piece of paper, and I will just cursive write all the crap that's in my head <laughs> and stuff that you would never, like using words you don't want anybody to find, right? And I'll just keep writing and writing all over it until I have this mess of a page you can't even read. But it's this release, this physical release. Then I'm able to say, okay, now I'm gonna read something inspirational, you know, I'm going to go to my favorite books, things like that. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you very yeah, much. Great question. That's great. It's like, it's um, the processing of it. Um, this has been great. I can't believe we're almost at time. Um, it always goes so fast with you, but this has been such good information. Um, and I love what you're saying about the rituals and bringing things in. It feels like there's a lot of um, really good stuff in the range of emotions and how to process it. So thank you so much, Laura, for being with us today. I hope you'll come back. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. So we're going to get you out of here on time today, and we're going to end the way we always do with our seven tenets given to us by Patty Dabrowski. Love. Love out loud. And laugh out loud. Stress less. Eat more plants, sleep, give. And my favorite one of all y'all, come on, who's going to do it? Move your body. Let's do it. See you all tomorrow on Thursday where spirituality matters. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you, Laura. Thank, thank, thank you, everyone. Laura. Thank you, Laura. Laura. Thank you, everyone. That was awesome. Thank Good you, job. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. Yay. Bye.